Good morning. I'm Dr. Joyce Brown, the president of FIT, and I'm delighted to be here, even if virtually, and to welcome you to our annual Sustainable Business and Design Conference. We have been sponsoring this conference since 2006, and each year it offers a cornucopia of creative new ideas, new strategies, new heroes of the movement, all of which provides new hope for our fragile environment. This year is no different, and I want to thank all of you for joining us, and especially our guest speakers and panelists, whose diverse areas of expertise offer so much for us to think about. I want to add thanks to Amber Valletta, who will wind up our conference with closing remarks tomorrow afternoon. Now, Amber is a longtime sustainability advocate, actress, and model, and I'm proud to say FIT's own sustainability ambassador. Now, I realize that Amber's title, actually her role as ambassador, is unusual. Colleges do not typically have sustainability ambassadors. But I believe that FIT's strong commitment to sustainability is unusual as well. However, as a college whose name is synonymous with fashion, we are acutely aware of the fashion industry's unfortunate role in the destruction of the environment. And long ago, we integrated sustainability into our mission statement and into our strategic goals. We understood that sustainability is essential and must be a consideration in all that we do and how we design, how we manufacture, and how we market the endless chain of consumer goods that make up so much of our abundant lifestyle. For us, sustainability is a way of life. As far back as 2009, we made a commitment to climate change at the Clinton Global Initiative University where our students are a constant presence with their innovative green projects. They're guided by faculty who are as passionate as our students are about solving our pressing environmental challenges. They are conducting extraordinary research in their labs and classrooms and have been a constant presence at WELL as the International Biodesign Competition where FIT has been in the winner's circle almost every year since it began. Sustainability is woven into our curriculum, too, with new courses being offered every year, many of them interdisciplinary. In fact, one of our most popular minors is called Ethics and Sustainability. We have a new lab in the photography department that is devoted to the environmental storytelling, a way of communicating through photography real-world environmental challenges. At the same time, our students and our faculty are engaged in eco-oriented research, much focused on the development of biodegradable fabrics with giants such as MIT and Stony Brook. And I cannot help but brag, as I think I do every year at this conference, about the college's own leading role among institutions in New York City in reducing our carbon footprints by 67%, and we're still at it. So for us to have a sustainability ambassador seems exactly right. And we're fortunate to have Amber Valletta, whose long experience in the fashion industry has turned her into a dedicated and respected activist and advocate. And I'm really eager to hear what she has to say to us tomorrow. But between now and then, we have a tantalizing program that's focusing on social responsibility, the impact on the environment in our selection of materials, in consumption and waste and strategies for sustainable business practices. So for now, I am pleased to introduce our science and math professor, Karen Pearson, who is the chair of FIT's Sustainability Conference. Karen? Thank you, Dr. Brown. Again, I'm Karen Pearson. I chair FIT Sustainability Council, and it is my great pleasure to welcome you to the 16th Annual Sustainable Business and Design Conference here at FIT. This year, our conference theme explores the pathways to impact, looking at intersectional points across sustain the pillars of sustainability that really highlight the moment of change that we are presently in. We will be considering how social justice intersects with social responsibility, how environment and materials intersect, consumption and waste, and design and business. All of these intersectional themes have much overlap 
within the, by themselves, but also with each other. And during our conference, we will hear from speakers, students, staff, and faculty who are really working at the cutting edge of some of pathways that will really create change that will impact solutions that are address some of our biggest global challenges here. It is my great pleasure on behalf of FIT Sustainability Council and to present this wonderful event and two day symposia to you to start to share and discuss these topics, which I hope are really primers for future discussions and opportunities to collaborate with all of you. Before I pass this opportunity and welcome on, I want to take a special moment to thank the FIT Sustainability Council members who all are integral in helping us curate and think about the theme and identification of appropriate speakers. A special thanks out to the conference chairs, Angela Brown and Colleen Hill, who you'll hear from tomorrow, Lady Zapata, who helps coordinate this with me. In particular, the members who provide us incredible support from IT and from our communications and external relations office that helped this event be such a showcase and opportunity to have so many impactful conversations. And finally, as we conclude our conference today, you'll have the great opportunity to hear from Amber Valletta, who is FIT Sustainability Ambassador and who has helped work with us and our conference team to really curate the event that is about to happen over the next two days. So again, it's my great pleasure to welcome you to the 16th Annual Sustainable Business and Design Conference, Pathways to Impact. And now without further ado, I introduce you to Caroline Levine, who is our Secretary of Sustainability and graduating senior here at FIT. So Caroline, thank you so much and welcome. Hi everyone, my name is Karen Levine and I serve as the chair of the Sustainability Committee for the Student Government Association. I am also a student member on FIT Sustainability Council that put together this programming that we have for the 16th annual conference. And I hope you all enjoy the programming that includes FIT alumni, current FIT students, along with some really incredible industry leaders. I think that it's going to be a really enjoyable one that has a lot of dynamic discussions and um, really important conversations that we need to have for the future of fashion. And I'm going to pass it off to Charisma, who will be leading the land acknowledgement. Thank you. Hello, my name is Charisma Hishikawa. I am a eighth semester fashion design student and a member of the Indigenous Peoples Club at FIT. Today, I'd like to ask you to join me in acknowledging the land that we currently stand on. New York City is the present home of the largest population of intertribal Native Americans, indigenous individuals, and First Nations people in the United States. The Fashion Institute of Technology in the entirety of New York City is currently built upon the traditional homeland of the Lenape, Haudenosaunee, Canarsie, Merrick, Rockaway, and Matinecock people. Today, we acknowledge the genocide, continued displacement, and injustice against Native and Indigenous people in the wake of perpetuated colonialism, systemic racism, and cultural erasure. We would like to recognize and be thankful for the continued Native and Indigenous climate change activism and the advocacy they lead towards protecting and preserving the land to which we live and are trespassing upon. Sustainability and environmental advocates must seek leadership and guidance from Indigenous and Native American people. It is imperative that we all work to make reparations if we are to create a truly responsible and accountable future. I would like to recognize that a land acknowledgement is merely an acknowledgement and that it is not enough. I implore you all to go beyond and to reach out and volunteer or donate to the various Indigenous organizations throughout New York City the American Indian Community House, the Lenape Center, the Flying Eagle Women Fund, the New York Indian Council, the Spider Women Theater, NYC Stands for Standing Rock, and the Indigenous Environmental Network, just to name a few. I would like to thank the American Indian Community House of New York City, located near the Manhattan Bridge Arc, for their help in writing this land acknowledgement. We thank you for listening to this land acknowledgement and welcome to FIT's 2022 Sustainability Conference. Thank you. <laughs> 